Welcome back Bartonella Buddies. My name is Jake and today we are addressing somewhat of a controversial topic and that is supportive oligonucleotide therapy or SOT for the treatment of Bartonellosis. The lab that creates all SOT therapy for Bartonella is called the Research Genetic Cancer Center or RGCC. I want to point out that nowhere on RGCC's website is there any information about SOT at all, and there's no information about Bartonella at all. The only written information we have about SOT is on the websites of practitioners who offer SOT, and they have virtually the exact same verbiage on their websites, almost like a copy and paste situation, and I'm not sure where that verbiage came from or who wrote it. So to briefly summarize, this verbiage describes SOT as a therapy for cancer, bacteria, and viruses in which a genetic key is made for a genetic lock that interferes with the ability of the cancer, bacteria, or virus to replicate. I have made a thesis for this video so that my argument is as easy as possible to follow. So my thesis is RGCC claims that they make SOT for Bartonella that is species specific. This means that you need to know the species that you are infected with for SOT to work. In order to determine the species that you are infected with, you need to be able to sequence the DNA. In order to sequence the DNA, you need a positive PCR. It is extremely difficult to get a positive PCR for Bartonella. Therefore, it's highly doubtful that RGCC is making an SOT for your Bartonella species. Now, before we dive in, I wanna make some disclaimers and set some parameters. My disclaimer is I'm not a scientist or a doctor, even though I do have a master's of science, just not in what we typically think of when we think of science. But I did go to research universities for my undergrad and my master's, and I have a firm grasp on how research works and what research can and cannot tell us. And so the parameters I want to set up are, one, I'm not going to talk about SOT for Lyme disease, aka Borrelia burgdorferi, or any other Borrelia species. I'm not a layperson's expert on Lyme, but I do consider myself a layperson's expert on Bartonella. Number two, I'm not going to speak on SOT for cancer or any other illness. I'm not going to speak on the potential of SOT, and I'm not going to speak on any other therapies that are similar to SOT. Number three, there are a lot of things about RGCC and their SOT that make me raise these caterpillar eyebrows in concern, but today I'm just going to focus on my thesis that I stated in the beginning of this video. RGCC requires that you send them your blood. This seems to imply that they are making the SOT from your blood, which would mean that they have to find the Bartonella in your blood. If this is true, this means that they have one of the most, if not the most, advanced diagnostics in the entire world for Bartonella. Let me explain the scientific facts. We know that Bartonella is extremely difficult to catch on regular PCR because Bartonella is found in extremely low levels in the blood in humans. This is why Dr. Breitschwert, professor of veterinary medicine and infectious disease at North Carolina State University, professor of medicine at Duke, chief scientific officer of Galaxy Diagnostics and overall Bartonella Whisperer, developed his patented BAPGM or BAPGM, which stands for Bartonella Alpha Proteobacteria Growth Medium. Whew. This is a growth medium that was developed based on insect growth medium as opposed to mammalian blood. This growth medium helps the Bartonella multiply to detectable levels so that PCR can then pick it up. This is why Galaxy refers to their testing as ePCR. The E stands for enrichment. Galaxy enriches your blood with this patented growth medium to help increase the sensitivity of the PCR. Another way in which Galaxy increases the sensitivity of their ePCR is through a triple draw. Instead of getting your blood drawn just once, you get it drawn three times in a five to seven day period. This has been shown to double the sensitivity of the ePCR. Galaxy has proven that their enrichment step and their triple draw step increases the sensitivity of the PCR in published scientific peer-reviewed journal articles. You can find these on their website. Once PCR picks up the Bartonella DNA, you then have to sequence the DNA to make sure that the PCR didn't accidentally pick up a different microbe and you have to sequence the DNA to determine the species. This is the only way, to my knowledge, that you can definitively determine the species. It is seldom that you can just do regular old PCR without enrichment and without a triple draw and find Bartonella in someone's blood. Dr. Breitschwer and his colleagues have proved this. Even with enrichment and triple draw, you can still get a false negative. So, when you send RGCC your blood, I highly doubt that they are making the SOT from your blood because I highly doubt that they are finding the Bartonella in your blood. If they are finding Bartonella in your blood, they have the best diagnostics in the world. 
then why are they not offering the best diagnostic service in the world? So now, let's talk about how RGCC requires that you have a positive test before you send them your blood. If they are finding the Bartonella in your blood, then why do you need a positive test? People counter argue that RGCC requires a positive test because they don't want to waste their time and resources looking for something that isn't there. Well then, let's go with that premise. So let's say I have a positive IFA test, which is an antibody test, from Galaxy, with titers of 1 to 128 for both Bartonella Hensley and Bartonella Quintana. You cannot determine that you have an active infection from an IFA test. IFA tests only tell you that you are creating antibodies to the Bartonella antigen. So if they don't want to waste their time and resources looking for something that isn't there, then they shouldn't accept IFA tests or any antibody test because antibody tests don't tell you whether or not you have an active infection. You also can't determine the species from an IFA test. The cross-reactivity between Bartonella Hensley and Bartonella Quintana is up to 95%. Because of this cross-reactivity, there is absolutely no way to tell from an IFA test which species you have been exposed to. Having a titer of 1 to 128 to Bartonella Hensley and Bartonella Quintana does not mean that you have been infected or exposed to both. You could have been infected with one or the other, both or neither. You could be infected with Bartonella vinsonii subspecies burkhoffii for all you know, because many Bartonella species are cross-reactive. I have heard that you or your doctor have to tell RGCC which species you want them to make the SOT for. That makes no sense. It would be a blind guess off of an IFA test in two ways. One, a blind guess that you actually are actively infected with Bartonella, and two, a blind guess for the species. So, once again, we are back at RGCC needing to find the Bartonella in your blood. Then there's the issue that they accept any positive test from a US accredited lab. They accept a positive test from any lab? I've already spoken on the dubiousness of the DNA connections test for Bartonella, and I'm going to put a link to that video in the top right corner of your screen as well as in the video description box. I've also written a further critique of DNA connections on my Instagram, and I'll put that in the video description box as well. RGCC should not be accepting positive tests from this lab, in my opinion, if they don't want to be wasting their time and resources. So now, let's go with the premise that they are not making the SOT from your blood. If they are not making it from your blood, then why do you need to send them your blood other than diagnostics? Which brings us back to they must have the best diagnostics in the world for Bartonella if they can find your Bartonella species from a single unenriched blood draw. They haven't published anything on their testing methods for Bartonella, and they also haven't published anything that demonstrates their expertise on Bartonella, for that matter. I am under the impression that they use regular old PCR, and they haven't contracted out, to my knowledge, Dr. Breitschwartz's technology or any other Bartonella expert's technology. Finally, I want to share with you what one of my Bartonella literate medical doctors has expressed about SOT. So I have two Bartonella literate medical doctors who I can unequivocally say are the leading Bartonella MD experts in the entire world, and if they're not the top two, they're at least top five. One of them said that the science behind SOT is not there yet. He also said, never underestimate how little physicians know about science. And what he means by this is that even physicians can be roped into diagnostics and therapeutics that don't have good science behind them. At the filming of this video, I have not had the opportunity to ask my other BLMD his opinion about SOT, but when I get it, I will be sure to update you by putting all of that in the video description box. And I've also heard through the grapevine that iLads decided to not have a presentation about SOT at the next conference. I welcome any response or clarification from RGCC, and if I have gotten anything majorly wrong in this video, I will rectify it appropriately. I am totally willing to admit when I am wrong, but what I'm not willing to accept is any accusations that I am standing in the way of Bartonellosis patients getting better because that is a 180 from my mission. I understand what it's like to be desperate and wanting so badly for something to work, but we can't let that desperation be stronger than good science. Thanks for watching and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And Piper says, stay strong Bartonella buddies. Piper, do you have a feeling that I might get a lot of hate comments for this video? Because I do. So if you come at me like a rabid dog in the comments, this is what I have to say to you. Rawr!